Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA card for this uh, Saturday night, uh, UFC Fight Night, Lewis versus Spivak. And the first thing to note, well, two things. Uh, one is that the DraftKings experiment with a late swap is over. Uh, we're going back to no late swapping at all. Um, so all of your uh, all of your lineups uh, are locked as the first fight goes off. The second thing about this first card uh, in, in a couple of weeks is that it's a very, very late start time, that being 10 p.m. Eastern time. Just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if you want to sweat, uh, you're, you're in for, a, I won't say a long night. It's not going to be particularly long. It's just going to be a late night. Uh, they do that because there's uh, quite a number of Asian fighters that are coming to Las Vegas for this card. And so they want to make it so that the uh, that their fans from, uh, from Asia uh, – it's easier for them to watch, and you know that that's 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 great. I mean, it's it's good for uh, it's good for the uh, for the business and all that stuff. It's not exactly the most convenient for someone from the East Coast as far as watching this stuff goes, but that's just the way it goes. Um, oh, one second. Hello. Good. How are you? So you you so you you. Sorry, I had to take that. I got off to a pretty awful start with this video, but uh, okay, we'll, we'll we'll pick up the pace. Um, so it is a late start, which is fine. It's only 12 fights. So what that means is a couple of things. You only have 12 fights. It's much less important, all else being equal, to get enormous scores. You know, it, it, these... The, the need to have a 105-point score out of your winner just goes up dramatically with each, you know, subsequent fight that, that gets carded because just, just that much, that much, uh, that many more combinations of, of, of fighters that can put that 105, 110 points up there. When you only have 12 fights, it becomes much more important to just get those wins. Right now, now, listen, all else being equal, I would rather get the high score than the low score. But uh, to take too much risk in the name of just only shooting for the big upside, it's not as important in 12 fights late. You can get there with kind of, you know, low scoring underdogs. Right? You could you could get there with losing underdogs in some say, in some cases when you have a 12 fight slate. The other thing about this slate, which you'll notice, is that there's a lot of names that um, that you might not recognize. Uh, there's there's five or six fights that are tied to this road to the UFC promotion, which involves a lot of lot of Asian fighters who are just we're just not familiar with, having not seen them all too often. Um, so what that provides is it's an interesting paradox, right? You have all this sort of variance. You know what I mean, like. Whenever there's a lot of unknowns, um, it, it creates this sense of variance that not that you shouldn't believe the lines or anything like that, but that they're not as sound. But what ends up happening, and I just want you to think about this before we attack this card, is that what people will do is they'll say, okay, I never heard of this guy. I never heard of that guy. As far as I'm concerned, it's 50-50. This guy's two to one. I'll just take the other one. But that, that only that only takes one part of the variance, right? It's it's very possible that if we don't know anything about these guys and a line is hung at minus two hundred, it's also possible that the favorite could probably be not probably could be minus four hundred in reality, you know. So it's not as though the variance only works to the favor of the underdog. If there's variance in a line, it might also work in favor of the favorite. That, that's that's something to keep in mind as we go through this. Nonetheless, we are going to at least start right with with the the same analysis as normal. You know, what we're looking at what we're looking for here are fighters with either or both, right? A, a, a combination of a good inside the distance prop, meaning you know, as implied by Vegas, there's a good chance that the fight finishes hopefully on their side, because um, that's what you get paid for in DraftKings for it. Or, and or, uh, we want fighters with good wrestling upside because in the absence of, of, a, of a finish, another, way to good, another good way to grab points is by, um, is by wrestling. And another way to grab points, which 
was in full display. And the last card that we had was just pure volume. Now, this doesn't happen all too often, but the, in the last in the last UFC card, the two top scoring fighters had no takedowns and not a finish. Very, very rare. But it happens. You get a real high-paced fight with a lot of significant strikes. That can add up as well. And we're going to get to a fight that, that deals with that a little bit later. Um, so, again, we are going to presume for the purposes of this discussion, these lines are somewhat accurate. And we're looking for the same things we always look for. Now, again, when we do the betting video, it's going to be a little bit different. But we'll, and we'll get to that tomorrow. So we're going to start like kind of right here um, with this Tiara uh, Aguiar fight. And before we do, I would like to say that what makes this card difficult is that there are only a couple of underdogs that really kind of stand out as, as I think, as, as guys that you or gals you want to play. And it stands up so much that I think that they're going to be really popular. So it becomes a very, very difficult uh, DFS uh, slate to kind of navigate. But we'll, we'll get to that. So right off the bat, you have uh, uh, Tiara. He's a minus 1,200 favorite. Um, so what we're expecting to see is probably about a $9,600 price tag from him. And let's take a look at that. So, yeah, so right off the bat is 9,600. So, again, what we're looking for in a vacuum here, uh, if you have a $9,600 fighter, is you need you need several things to have. Okay. It's not enough to just say I have, uh, you know, better than even money to finish. What you really need is – about even money to finish in the first round or probably both or finishing upside along with takedown round and pound upside. In other words, you need to have a combination of finishing upside as well as takedown grappling upside. I mean, in a perfect world, if you're 9,600, you better finish them in the first minute or get at least one takedown, maybe more en route to a late first round or second round finish. Um, once you get into the third round finishes, that then you need like at least one takedown per round. You're looking for you need like four takedowns. Um, it's not it's not easy to get there at 9600. Uh, let's just put it that way. Um, but let's just take a look. First of all, is inside the distance prop in and of itself is is you know is is it's fine. Um, you have Tiara. Winning inside the distance is minus about 140, which is great. Okay. You don't get that all too often. And that's terrific. The other thing about him, which is good, is that he does have grappling upside. Not so much the, the takedown and control themselves, but the submissions. Um, although, I mean, he does have good takedowns as well, but, but he, it's not the same type of, 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 takedown plus ground and pound guy that we usually want in these $9,600 fighters. Um, in addition to that, Aguiar does have some rest is his, his opponent. Now I'm not saying we're going to play him because I don't think we are, but there are variations where Aguiar at the very least makes life a little bit difficult on Tara on way to a victory. So my point is, is that Tiara relative to his price is okay it's not a lock you know what i mean uh it's okay his round one prop is not great uh terror win round one i mean it's fine like he's probably up plus after the big plus like 130 or so to win in round one i guess that's okay I, I, okay, let me go back. I'll say it's okay to good as a play, Tiara. Not a lock, but I think he's okay to good. Okay, moving on. Uh, Jun Young Park versus Dennis Tumulian. Uh, this is one of those underdogs that I think is going to be pretty popular, and we'll get to why in a second. Um, first of all, as far as – and we're always double-checking to make sure that the lines are accurate relative to the salaries. So Jun Young Park, he's minus 200, so I presume he's probably 9K. Versus 7,200. I think that's probably what this is going to be. Let's take a look. Um, no, actually. Wow. Park is only 8,500. This is really bizarre. I, I didn't even notice this. I, I was, I thought that 
Tululum is getting all kinds of love here, but I'll tell you, Park at basically a minus 200, even with the big, at, at that price, I, I think that's legitimate. Boy, that is legitimate line value. Um, so I think this is actually pretty strong just on line value alone. But we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to we'll get to the inside the distance prop now though. Um, so what you're looking for in 8500 is really not that much. You know, you're you're looking for maybe plus 200 inside the distance, something like that. Let's take a look. Park inside the distance is um, it's not bad. It's like plus 220 or so. And, and when you factor in also the fact that he has some takedowns to his credit, I mean, his last fight he took down and submitted uh, Joseph Holmes. I mean, Park is a pretty good play here. I, I, I didn't even think about this. Um, uh, I, I figured Tululium was going to be a pretty popular underdog here, but maybe not, you know, because if the line is this, I don't say this off, but this is very, very strange. Anyway, Let's take a look at Tululian. At 7,700, I mean, you're looking, you don't need much. Maybe like plus 300 to finish and see what it looks like. Tululian to finish, man, plus 360, I guess that's okay. You know, maybe he's not, listen, maybe he's not as great of a play as I thought he was. And maybe as a, maybe he won't be as low owned. Maybe he won't be as high owned as I thought he would be. I just have this, 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 memory in my head of him just getting scoring 120 fantasy points in this last fight when he when he put a beating on um second round finish on on, on jamie pickett um and there's very very few good underdogs here that at least you've heard of like if you could take a shot at some of these underdogs it's going to be an asian fighter that no one has any data on pretty much um so i think i do think Tululian is going to get some some love but i don't i don't know why you know his 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 metrics are not great and his line value is awful. So I, I want to take a look, another look at this. But I do think that this fight is one that's that's going to deliver in some form. So I think this is a fight you kind of want to key on. Originally, I had a lot of exposure going into Lillian. But when I look at the line value here, I think Park actually might be the better play. I, I, I want to play both these guys. I'll get exposure to both these guys. All right, so G Young Kim versus Mandy Baum. You have two fighters coming off of big losing of losing streaks, and one of them is a minus two seventy five. Um, well, let's take a look at the lines here. So she's minus two seventy five. I expect to see, you know, this is where I expect to see like 90, 90, 100, 90 200, something like that. Um, and that's what you're getting, like nine thousand seventy two hundred, which is reasonable. Okay, so there's no real line value here. When you took take a look at the um, inside the distance prop, uh, neither of them are particularly good. You have bomb inside the distance is like atrocious, so minus plus twelve hundred or something. Kim inside the distance is like a plus four fifty. I mean that's terrible. So neither of these fighters are particularly good GPP play or or DFS play. The thing that I'm, I'm kind of tied to here is this idea of volume. See, Ji Young Kim. When you look at her uh, game log here, uh, her fight log, you'll see that she has a whole bunch of significant strikes, like Cacciara, 170 significant strikes, McCann, 122 significant strikes, even against Edwards in a loss, almost 80 significant strikes. So this is this is a lot of volume. And, and, and not only that, but her opponent, um, Mandy Baum, I watched a little bit of tape. She She – she gives up quite a bit of strikes on her own. So, you know, I, I feel as though that Kim could be a sneaky, a sneaky upside GPP play here, you know, where you, you she gets it done just like that. I keep forgetting her name, but that woman fighter from last week did or two weeks ago, just pile on the volume and just rack up the points and score 110 fantasy points just even in a decision. Or, God forbid, she, she racks up all those significant strikes and gets a finish. Um, that's uh, That that could do it. Um, the Mandy Baum underdog play, see, under normal cards, I would say you just don't do it because the inside the distance prop is so poor. But unfortunately, you know, there's so few good underdogs here. 
on a card like this, if she wins, let's say she just wins some decision. And she could. I mean, Kim's lost five in a row, right? Um, and Mandy Baum did have some promise before her last two fights, which eh, well, listen, weren't that bad. Um, if she could eke out a, even a 55-point decision here, I mean, on a card like this, it's probably going to be, I don't say probably, but it's got a shot to be enough. So I wouldn't, on a 15-fight card, I could X her out. On a 12-fight card, you got, I think you have to use her in MMA. Um, and that's just my opinion. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, next, we have Jung Sung Park versus Sung Juk Choi. You have about a minus 180-ish, minus 170-ish. So we're looking at, you know, something similar to Tululi and Park, right? Um, actually, I expect Park to be a little cheaper. But he, I expect him to be about 80, you know, 8,700 or something like that. We'll take a look at it, and it's about, whoa, it's another one. Park is 8,400. Um, let's compare him to the other one. Hold on. So, Jung Park is 85, and H Park is 84. Yeah, I guess that's about reasonable. I think he's pretty cheap, though. I think he should be, I think he should be more expensive. I think you've got some line value here with this one as well. I mean, you have a park park combination here of two two bits of line value. And the the other thing about the park play is that you look at the inside the distance prop, and it's actually not that bad. You have park inside the distance is ah maybe it is that bad plus three twenty, and he doesn't really have the 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 takedowns. I mean, it's 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 a play based on line value. It's just not the greatest inside the distance prop or style prop here. Um, Choi, his inside the distance prop. Now, again, this was like, it's funny. This was like a bad line that I looked at earlier. I don't know what this is, but he's he's like a plus 800 inside the distance. It's it's just poor. Um, But again, you know, in MME, when you're starved for good underdogs, you're probably going to have to get to some of him. Okay, so not a priority, but I would definitely include him in my pool. Okay, so Nakamura versus Kazama, you have 9,300, 6,900. So I would expect, you know, minus 250-ish, something like that, at least. And I think that's what we're getting. Yeah, he's minus 400. Not only that, not only is he minus 400, but he's got some good style points here. We're going to get to that in a second. So first of all, is inside the distance prop. You have wow, Nakamura win by KO is, is basically pick him. Wow, that's kind of crazy. But him inside the distance, minus 125. And that's, this is really, really strong. I mean, that, well, that's what you need at 9,200, right, or 9,300. But in addition to that, you know what you get? You get all kinds of wrestling upside. This guy's a national Jap Japanese national champion wrestling. You could, he's got really everything going for him here. I think he's probably the best play. You know, good win odds. Good inside the distance prop, wrestling upside. I mean, I I think he's just as good of a play as Chiara, if you want to know the truth. Um, so yeah, definitely Nakamura um and Kazama. I mean, just no reason. He's plus 350, but his inside the distance prop isn't good either. So yeah, so let's just for fun, let's let's put in these guys as we come up with them. All right, uh Jung Young Lee versus Yi Jia or Sha Li. Uh, you have another minus 250, which should be again about, you know, 9,100, something like that. Let's take a look at this. All right. So Lee's got not bad. I mean, 8,900, that's sort of okay line value, not terrible. Um, it's kind of weird. We're getting so much of this. Um, Let's look at the inside the distance prop, see if we can't find a good play here. Um, well, you have, I don't see much of it. There's no, there's no lines here. Well, you have, I don't even see an inside the distance prop. So what can I tell you? Uh, well, Ja inside the distance is plus 375. 
maybe even that's not that bad. John instead of this plus 375 at nah, 7,300. I mean, it's you're just going to have to use it, though, in MME. You know, so this is actually not bad. Okay. Um, and Zhang Li, I don't, I don't know what happened to her to his inside the distance prop here. Um, but needless to say, he's he's in play as well as a decent eighty nine hundred. Um. Okay. Uh, Jeka Jari versus Jubli. It's basically a pick 'em. Jubli maybe a slight favorite, and the price kind of reflects that. Uh, 8,200, 8K, so no edge there. Take a look at the inside the distance prop, see if any of these things jump out. Maybe a plus 300, something like that. Less would be great. Um, Ju uh, Jubilee inside the distance, plus 300. It's okay. So Jekka inside the distance is much better, plus 200. So Jekka is the play, okay? Jack is definitely the better GPP play. Um, can you play Jubilee? Sure. I mean, MME, this is a card where you can play everybody. Um, but Jack, I think, is definitely the, the, the best play. Um, he's just got the best inside the distance prop, and there's no other line value. So um, I definitely think he's very, very strong. He makes the rest of your lineups kind of go as well. Um, Adam Fugit versus Yusako Toshuhita. Kinoshita, sorry. Um, so he's like a plus, minus 350, so he's probably going to be another $9,200, $9,300 guy. Let's take a look. Um, only $9,100. Um, it's okay. Um, I kind of want to add a little bit of decent line value, though. I want I want an inside the distance prop and hopefully pick him. Don't think you're going to get it, though. Let's take a look. Kinoshita inside the distance is... I mean, I don't know, not quite. It's like plus 120, maybe. Not the worst. And unfortunately, this is kind of the theme of this card. I mean, this is just not the worst uh, to Kinoshita to play. Not as good as the as that, that wrestler from before, that's for sure. And Kinoshita is not the same type of, you know, does not have the same type of, of wrestling as Nakamura does, for example. So um, Kinoshita is fine. As far as Fugit goes, uh, we need an inside the distance prop of at least 350, maybe. Let's take a look. Fugit inside the distance, he's like plus five, plus 600. You just can't play him. Okay, moving on. Uh, Do Hu Choi versus Kyle Nelson. I don't want to get into the narrative of this fight, but you'll see that, you know, that. that Duhu Choi has not fought in years, and that's because he was in the Korean Army. Um, you could put it, put whatever narrative you want on that. Um, nonetheless, uh, he is a minus 190 favorite. Uh, well, with the big plus minus 175. So I'm expecting him to be about 8,800 or so. Let's see what he is. He is 8,600. Little, um, you know, kind of get a little bit on the cheap side. A little bit on the cheap side. So I think Duhu Choi is a good play here. Uh, on line value, not a great play, but an okay play. Let's take a look at the inside the distance prop, though. I'd like, again, at that price to see, like, a 200. I think we might get it. Let's see. Uh, where are we? Oh, my God, where are the, where are the Dooku Choi lines? Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. Everything is Nelson. Is that what we're saying here? Um, we can't find anything. For Duhu Choi, I, I'm sorry, but kind of strange. But let's see, Nelson, 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 Nelson. Let's take a look overall the inside the distance prop. How about that? Well, Nelson himself is plus 300. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world, you know, at that price. Boy, do I really have to play some of this? I mean, plus 300 at, at, What's this price again? Plus 300 at 76. It's fair. Probably will have to get to some of him. But uh, Choi is probably the, the side here. Um, 
Boy, I wish I could have a lot more of a stand here. Well, we'll I'll give you some stands as we get there, I suppose, we review. But everything's like really, really close on this card, guys. I have to say, um, uh, I, listen, I like this, the, the Jekka play. <laughs> that, that's for sure. Aside from that, I mean, listen, I like Nakamura if I can get to him. Um, I don't know where I am at this park play anymore. I, I was going to be on Tawuli, and now I think I like the park side. So if you start with something like this, and we'll get to the main in a minute, I guess that's something you could do. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Tybura versus Imanov. Uh, Ina, Ina Iv Ivanov? Ivanov. So with Tybura at minus at 8,300, uh, Ivanov 7,900. I'm expecting to see, you know, about a minus 140 for Tybura. And uh, that's what we're getting. So there's no line value. And as far as an inside the distance prop, it's interesting, you know, for a heavyweight fight, like neither fighter has an inside the distance prop worth betting, you know. Um, Ty Boris is a little bit better at plus 350, but even that's like really poor for this price. You could argue that Ty Boris does have some takedown upside, though, um, just from looking at his, his, his game logs or his fight logs. Um, not his last fight. His last fight was actually it's actually quite amazing. <laughs> he was a big underdog to uh, to Romanov, and he got taken down and was like, they were, he was getting crapped on. Like I thought the fight was over. He gave up a 10-8 round in the first round and just totally fought back and won the decision. It's kind of amazing if you think about it. Um, I do like his side. Uh, I, I We'll talk about this more when we probably on the betting side of this, but I just, I just find he's just supposed to play these heavyweights, um, especially on a card that kind of stinks with respect to upside. Um, I, I'll, I'll take a shot, with, I think, with Tybora to be overweight on him here. All right. A um, few more. We have Da Un Young versus Devin Clark. Uh, minus 240 or so, minus 220. So we, we expect to see him very similar to Jung Lee, sort of similar to... Um, Maybe a little bit more expensive than Jun Young Park. And that's what we're getting by 8,700. Okay. Totally fair. Totally decent line value. Um, well, the absence of line value. Totally fair line. So we're looking at the inside the distance prop here. So we have Young by TKO is very strong. Um, as a matter of fact, we have Young inside the distance at basically uh, a pick em, which at that price is very good. Okay, so this is a very, very strong play. The Dalvin Young is a very, very strong play. And 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 you have Clark, who is a very poor play, plus 500 inside the distance, not a lot of takedown upside either. So Dalvin Young is very, very strong. So that, that's another. Okay, so we're, we're getting some plays here. So Park, Young, Nakamura, or or Park to Louis, either one. Nakamura, Jacob. You want to play Tiara? Go ahead. I mean, it's going to be tough to do. But where's Tiara? Um, Tyra, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can't play all this, obviously. Um, all right, so we're getting there. Then you get to the main event, and uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I mean, if, if you play this card, um, you're going to have to be up at 3 in the morning because you're probably going to have to play this fight. First of all, the Derek Lewis side is just something you're just going to have to do. I mean, yeah. you have Spivak 8,800, Derek Lewis 7,400. Normally with a $7,400 fighter, you need like a like plus 400 inside the distance. And with uh, with Derek Lewis here, you're getting um, Lewis inside the distance plus 280, something like that. Pretty much all of his wins are going to be inside the distance at 7,700, or is that what I said? Or even less? At 7,400, you're just going to want that. You know? So um, uh, he's a very, very strong underdog that you just kind of have to play, even though he's going to lose like 67% of the time. It's just the way it goes. Um, and on the other side, you have Spivak, who has pretty much everything that you want. You have Takedown upside, you have – let's look at the inside the distance prop here. You have – let's take a look at him. 
I presume he's probably even money to finish, right? Let's see. Uh, Spivak by inside the distance. I mean, he's even more likely. I mean, he's like a minus 130 to finish, plus takedown upside. I mean, he's – I mean, let's call it what it is. I mean, he's the best play on the slate, right? I mean, he's, he's got the best inside the distance prop and, and, and not the, the most expensive price. How is he not the best play on the slate? You know, so uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to have 100 percent of this fight, uh, I think. Uh, I know it's hard because it's gonna be really really popular, but I don't know how you avoid it. I mean, these are the two clearly the best plays in each of their price ranges. Um, if and if one of them doesn't get there, the other one will. I, I think. How does how does Derek Lewis win and not get there? You know, how does how does Spivak win and not get there? I mean, I guess the only way Spivak wins doesn't get there is if something like like a third round. He's not winning a decision. There is no. There's no going to be not going to be a decision in this fight. Matter of fact, why don't we just bet the the, the fight doesn't go? Well, you know, we'll get there when we, when we do bet it. But I, I don't see the winner of this fight now uh, avoiding the optimal. I just I just I think they just have to be there. So especially on a twelve fight slate. So unfortunately, this is going to be. It's going to be an interesting card to try to get different here because you have to play. I think you just have to play this. Um, so with this build, which we had, I mean, and you're going to end up with, with a whole bunch of Derek Lewis. I really think you will. Um, um, and that's why I think the Tolulian play is probably going to be more popular than, than I thought because – you play Tululian and Lewis, then all kinds of stuff you can do. You know, then you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, that's pretty much all that I have. Uh, we're gonna go through um, uh, the betting breakdown a little bit. You know, probably tomorrow. But that's what I would do. I would play the main event. Uh, I like Jekka, right? And aside from that, you know, uh, I, I do like the. I, I would play one of these two probably the Park Tululian. Haven't figured out what what to do with that yet. And I like Nakamura, and I like Young, and I like Tiara, and, and you know, and then use Sabersim to help build MME stuff. That's when you get all the other crap that you didn't want, but you probably have to want a card like this. That'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, and look for the betting breakdown probably tomorrow.